Alright, hello again. I've got that first episode properly re-recorded, so now you can watch all of the things straight up to here with proper audio. Very exciting, been sharing the videos in a few new places, and we are back to do more of this Halo stuff. Hope you've been enjoying up to now, and hope you enjoy what I've got going on today. I've just adjusted a couple of settings. Sound and such, I think there's some very cool stuff to show off, and by now you should know what I'm doing with these. We're going to just appreciate some Halo at the pace of whatever thoughts come to me today. Here we are, we're doing our beach landing thing, and this is one of the iconic scenes from- <laughs> Oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah, I'm not even going to talk, I might just let this scene play out because it's quite something. As I'm always saying, Halo is a very fun game to come back to just because it's made of a lot of very lively moving parts and you can't quite tell what it's going to do. It very much runs on its own internal and very serious logic. Things happen, things just are allowed to play out, it's not trying to force results. It's set up to run a certain way and then it just falls out as it will and as you've probably seen already, some pretty interesting things have gone on and I'm just trying to capture this. Yeah, it doesn't quite make sense to call this a let's play, does it? What I'm doing right now, am I playing this or am I shooting a little war documentary right now? This is my little, uh, you know, maybe you've seen Faces of, A Face of War, the Vietnam War documentary. Cameraman just tags along with American soldiers in the middle of the Vietnam War. That's what we're doing right now, just me and these guys. People are dying all around me, but I've got to hold the camera. Oh, look! Trying to find each other. <laughs> ah, just look at these guys go. I'm pretty sure I did this at the end of the last video on this same difficulty. The Marines won handily, but look at how dynamic this is. All the different stuff that can play out. They're all just constantly calculating, making tactical decisions. It's maybe not the smartest thing ever, but I think there's a very good case to be made for it being the most interesting ever. Just look at the sheer amount of stuff going on right now. This last minute encounter between these last few aliens and the marines, grenades and stuff going off. The big boss elites diving in and getting him. And look, they're all dead. And if I kill them, a checkpoint will trigger and that'll be the end of our fun, but... That was so much fun, don't you want to do it again? <laughs> I remember this is actually something I used to do when I was a lot younger. This is probably one of the most interesting things Bungie ever put together, and... Yeah, let's do it again. But last time that grenade, it stuck to people. I don't even know if I've shown off that feature yet. You can have so much fun with it. The alien grenades stick, the human ones are more powerful. There's some balance for you if you're into that. But yeah, last time that stuck to a guy and killed him, and this time it didn't, so the marines are off to a much better start, and... <laughs> There's another one. He's dove, he's survived. Don't think anyone's been lost in this group, you can see them all just... Again, they're doing their thing, they're built on the myth engine, they move between nodes to think they've been programmed to look for a new node further up the beach if the aliens are dead, and they can pause, they can throw a grenade, whatever. In the older levels, I was so comfortably on top of things because I was shooting, you wouldn't have seen the marines much, but I'm just going to play this scenario out a couple more times so you can really get a feel for how clever these guys are. Maybe clever's not the word, but for how robust they are. Look at the... look at how elaborate the interactions they can have are, considering how simple they are. People love to praise a game like Fear for its AI, they call it, but do the computer parts, the characters in Fear do anything as interesting as this? I don't know. At no point in Fear did I feel like I wanted to make a sequence play out over and over again because it was all just so damn interesting. I'm going to pause this now just so that we don't get that checkpoint cutting us off, but as you can see, this time I don't think the marines lost anyone and they absolutely kicked the aliens' asses. And so I've been looking at my guys. Let's look at the aliens though, they aren't complete morons either. You can see the little ones, they have different guns, they throw grenades, they're pinning that guy down and hitting with a grenade. Good job the aliens. And they have kind of social dynamics, they have modeled in a fairly simple way, but you'll always have just kind of in how the level is made, the little guys will be ahead of the big guys, but 
they actually interact in ways more complex than that. <laughs> oh gee, look at it go, I love this game. But yeah, the big guys hang back and, you know, they try to take cover when they're hurt, they try to hide if they're being overwhelmed and their shields are down. Like me, they have a shield and they understand that they're in danger if that's down, they'll try to hide. The little guys, they'll try to be tough as they can, but if the big guys go down before them, they panic and run away, it's very funny. Also, just if things are going badly for them, they're not very tough. And there's him trying to keep it together, he's not gonna run like his buddies, but he will back up if he's in trouble. He's got no support, he hid behind that tree last time. This time he's all in amongst us, and there he goes, he's hiding again. He moved because of me, but you can see that's pretty good. He understands that he's got to put stuff between himself and them if he wants to be better off, and... Looking at the situation again, he's actually doing pretty good splitting their attention, and they're all getting kind of cut up in here. You can see it's a big, colourful, bloody mess between them there. And they're just going to try to push up past them. That grenade might come in to come in for the save there, or about five left. They're going to try to overwhelm the big ones. <laughs> All of them get angry. You might see the marines do a similar thing, they get angry when they're hurt. That's just a fun detail, it doesn't mean a lot. It does switch them into a new setting of AI or whatever you want to call it. They actually have an angry state in which they behave differently. They haven't actually won, he's hiding again, that's what they do. And they understand he's there and try to sneak up slowly. Just lots of dynamic stuff going on, the battlefield is stained where people are getting hit, bodies all over the joint. When I say that Halo is a game that hasn't really been surpassed, it most kind of worked sideways at, this is kind of the stuff I mean. Have you seen a more complex and entertaining interaction between different characters who aren't you in a video game? Something that first-person shooters, if we want to call them that, kind of do is... I think they tend to lean on human input as a kind of crutch, which I find very boring, frankly. Like, Call of Duty doesn't need its characters to be able to interact in a way which makes much sense or is very interesting because they understand just... If they have the celebrity guest who plays your boss in that campaign yelling at you constantly, you'll feel pressured, you'll constantly kill everything, you'll just cut a path through, and they just have to be a kind of living scenery asset. I'm not saying that's inherently bad, every game is trying to do its own thing, you don't have to be ultra detailed in the way that I like no matter what you're doing, but I do find this very interesting, and if you're not doing it, what are you doing? I'm very much in favour of a slapdash solution that gets the job done to your standard, whatever it is you're doing, but <coughs> that's of course the other half of this, isn't it? That Nobody has a vision they want to realize that's as interesting as Halo at the same time, do they? It's slapdash kind of improvised methods to realize slapdash very half-assed visions. You know, that's... Again, as I was saying about Bolt Gun, it's not just that the particular details will be right, you will have the right ideas of what to do because your heart is in it. If your heart is in it, you will also just think of new details. You will want to make something better if it's a passion. That's... The value of passion is that you get it right, and you also want to make the right kinds of interesting things. You want to actively drive forward. Again, that point of cultural inertia. If you're just working to a good standard, but your heart isn't in it, you can do good work within something that exists, but if nobody else is inventing where your ideas kind of come from, if there is no Sergeant Mark IV, the single-player first-person shooter, basically dies, and yeah, Halo was a game made by a team where everyone was their own kind of Sergeant Mark IV, everyone was this deeply creative character who had a lot of stuff they wanted to do, and again, I understand, I don't mean that these guys are gods, they were the best ever, I understand that a lot of what makes Halo Halo was actually incidental. This scene is probably the best place to bring up that detail that I've mentioned over and over again, that Halo started out life as a real-time strategy game. I mentioned Myth before. Myth was the strategy game they made before this on the same engine, actually. It had pseudo three-dimensional kind of sprite characters rather than 3D models because they couldn't run that at the time. It was made for older computers, but spiritually it was the same. It was a kind of pseudo autonomous army that you were commanding from the strategy game Bird's Eye View and 
yeah, what I'm doing here is basically letting this play out like a myth scenario, and you can see that enough of that game's sense and programming is here that, you know, these guys, again, as I've said many times, they move like strategy game units. Units from a very good strategy game where they're... Basically, if you leave them to be autonomous, they will do things that make sense, and the idea is that they look cool without your direct input distracting you. You can look closely. These guys can be the star of the show, and I think that <coughs> it's the real testament to how good Bungie were that the supporting cast of their game are more interesting than the main focuses of most new ones. Just everything about this on both sides, the way the aliens behave, the way the marines behave, you could make a, something like a strategy game out of these guys, or when I say strategy game, what I mean is indirect action game. If you built a game where I am not here as a presence with a gun directing the fight by personally killing things, using the parts that compose this game, you could make something very deeply interesting, I believe. If there was a kind of missed opportunity within Halo, one was to simply make this again but bigger every couple of years using more power in consoles and computers until, you know, by now. What I thought as a kid, if you would ask me, I would have thought, oh yeah, Halo games by now, there'll be this scene, but there's like 200 on each side. And of course what we get is Halo Infinite, where you're locked into hallways that look like the most boring levels of this game. There are no marines, everything is nonsensical, it looks technically marginally better, Really, it looks more expensive, it doesn't look better, the aesthetic direction has completely bled out because people who, again, their hearts aren't in it, are in charge now and they have no sense for what's cool, they have no philosophy driving their creation. And this time, let's flip to Ugly View. Man, did things get teal just now. And the ferns, they're on the beach as well, we'll comment on them in a minute too. Oh my god, they ruined everything. It's very shaded in the shade, it's very teal over there. I don't like this color scheme, but... Remember, as ugly as this is, it's still built on the bones of a good game, so we can still watch these guys. They'll still have an interesting fight play out, even if it's visually far muddier now. And just look at these cool dudes go. I love this. Looks like the Marines are gonna win again. They've just cleared this, no problems. Nobody got stuck with a grenade. The gun in profile still looks alright. Again, the bones are fine, they just piled up idiotic incidental detail and ornamentation on top, but you pack them into a busy scene, it doesn't look too bad. We've got a lot of stuff going on now, and I can just forget how they were meant to be and enjoy myself. If the original Halo didn't exist and I was looking at this, I would say, this is kind of an ugly game, but everything else about it is really cool, so I could still enjoy this. And, yep, there they go again. Gee, I'd actually say the Elite looks much worse than the poor Marines, and the Marines don't look great. The blood as well, I don't like how it looks. It looks less like... Ah, you can put together your own terminology for how you'd like to describe that, but I think it's a nice, even kind of paint effect in the old game, whereas here it's ugly smears. You could say that looks more violent, but I just think it has less character. The way that everyone kind of bleeds the same, and it's this very bright and kind of even painting thing that happens when people get shot in the old engine, it's hard to describe, but I like that. I think it leaves a very distinct and characteristic mark upon the battlefields of the game in a way which is kind of lost here, even though it's still happening. It looks less exaggerated, cartoonish in that way, which I don't like. Again, it's kind of the wuxia factor of creating a stronger impression by parting with reality to become more real, to make more of an impression. And I think the Marines have got this. Let's see this guy if he can get anyone with his last... Come on, get him. Get him, guy. Last stand. And he's down. But yeah, now that this is on my mind, you know what it makes me want to do is it makes me want to see if I can record Myth, because that is... Uh, do you feel better when I do that? I hope you do, because I always do. Let's quickly look at these. They just seem to have more stuff on them when we switch to that. Again, it's just detail. Like, I can imagine that someone just got anxious looking at this thing without all that detail. One thing they did, which we can give them credit for, there is a visible pilot now. But, of course, in the original game you will very rarely, if ever, look this close. I am a nerd who knows all the game. I don't need to pay attention to the beach scene, so I'm gonna come over here. 
you can see they weren't completely soulless, completely moronic. They were trying to do good. They saw what... This was an example of, you know, proof that they thought that they were correcting errors and absences in the original game, and this is a point, credit where it's due, I will give it to them. If you want proof that they actually were trying to fix things, here is one thing they fixed. They actually put a pilot in there. But of course, at the same time, I'll say the generally dark and highly reflective interior looks better. I like it like that. I don't like that it's big and spacious and the sun streams in there. Like, and frankly, with the way that this is detailed, it would look weird if a pilot's face was in there. I understand why Bungie didn't bother with a model. On the whole, the impression of the cockpit is still better here. I also like that it's kind of angular and just a bit meaner, but they were trying. I want it to be clear that they were trying. I don't think this was a half assed thing. Maybe in a few places it was, but on the whole, they were trying to genuinely do what they thought was better. And let me just check something that I haven't before. They both say E419. I was just making sure of that. That is arguably an error, but I don't mind. It's not something you'll notice unless you look very close. And again, here's just the blood, and I think that... You can see that the colors are far more distinct, the spread is far wider, and the terrain is less cluttered and muddy in general, which means, of course, that you can tell them all apart far more distinctly who was getting hurt where, and you can put together a better picture of what was happening, I think. Again, it's the detail is more sparse, so what is there reads far more strongly, registers far more strongly. Gee, you want to talk horror vacui? They couldn't tolerate sand. They had to... Wow, sirs, look at all of that fern. Now just... <clears throat> I wanted to say... I said that I would comment on this. Look at all of this absurd grass that they put down. I want to say it's just stupid, it's a mistake, but... On the other hand, maybe it's not for me. I understand that this is not a... The Halo remaster is not alone in having lots of ferns pasted over somebody else's vision. There is also the infamous, in certain circles, Half-Life 2 cinematic mod, which does much the same thing. It covers City 17 in ferns, and there are a lot of other games which do this. The general tendency is toward loads of incidental and ornamental detail. You might also know of the... Dark so no, Demon Souls remaster, which did the same thing again. You have old, decrepit, lifeless castles in the original, and they are now full of vines, ferns, and creepers in the new version. And again, you think, was this a mistake that they're making every time, or is there a certain kind of person who likes this? I am inclined to think, yes, I think that people with low taste who, you know, they just want to be impressed, and they have a very low standard for impressed. It's the crass and easily quantified and observable which impresses them. I basically mean people who have the taste of Gulf Arabs or Indians are who I imagine enjoys this. Like, why I say that, I don't mean to pick on them, but, you know, Arabs, it explains itself if you look at anything they invest in. No taste, just crass maximalism and showing off. And Indians, you may be familiar with the whole meme of the now you see me too card scene if you don't know what that is you're watching this on youtube you can look it up right now now you see me too card scene a very absurd movie about magicians robbing a bank or something i don't know i haven't seen it just a very cringe absurd lame scene of people having mastery over some very silly stuff and it became a meme because the comments section was just kind of well, for one, the scene is absurd, but for another, the comment section is just kind of exploding with Indians who are just losing their minds over this joke of a scene. Wow, sir, it's very cool, amazing, and just... Ah, I think, why is there so much junk in the media today? Well, we had this, now we have this, and I just think, wow, sir, it's very amazing. This is so cool, just like now you see me too. That's just a brief theory on how we got here. Now, I'm going to go to the beach and get in the car. I'll probably start this level again if I want to record more Halo, but there's just a few more thoughts for you. Some thoughts on the grass, you know I love my grass, and some thoughts on the neat little ways that the game plays itself. I didn't even cover everything I'd want to cover if I were to do this beach landing, frankly. 
I might even do another video on it. I just think it's the most interesting damn thing in the game. Hello, boys. Look how mossy the ground got under you. But yeah, just teal hideousness. What I want to talk about in relationship, in relation to this scene, sorry, I got distracted, was Halo Wars. I said that this could work without personal input, and Halo Wars itself is interesting. I actually own it and re could record it a little. But what I want to record right now is Myth, because I think it's the more related game, and if I were to come back here and maybe also record some Halo Wars, I would talk about how in some ways it is, but in a lot of ways it also unfortunately isn't very much like this game, and why I see it as a okay, pretty big missed back. opportunity is how I would characterize Halo Wars, and the missed opportunity in general for games is that not just as a shooter and as Halo sequels, but in general games weren't made along the lines of what it is that I appreciate in Halo, and I hope that by talking about that beach sequence for a bit you can understand what I mean about the autonomy, the semi-autonomy, the moving parts, the complex interactions. I'd like you to just think for me. Did you see what I was getting at, and if so, is there anything like that in other games which you can appreciate? I look around a lot for games like Halo, I could give a couple of tangential, maybe, examples, but Really, no. I think this thing is a kind of class unto itself. It's There are no games like Halo. The Halo killers all missed the goddamn point. The Halo sequels unfortunately drifted away from what I consider the coolest parts of these games, and it's kind of a one-of-a-kind experience, which is why it is very easy for me to come back to and enjoy this thing pretty much any time, and yeah, I hope that as I just walk through this and appreciate it out loud, you can appreciate what's going on too. If we all put some more thought into why this thing is so great, maybe we can revive it, maybe we can all just have a good time thinking about it. I hope you're interested in this, I'm definitely having a good time just talking for my own sake here, and again, hope you are too. Thank you very much.